18 senators are calling on government to put a stop to financial companies that prey on prisoners. Now, when inmates are released from prison, they're given a prepaid debit card with all the money they saved up during their time in lockup, from money given to them by family to prison wages. For some, this is all the money they have when they re-enter the real world. But these prepaid cards can have egregious fees, transaction fees, balance inquiry fees, even inactivity fees. So money that rightfully belongs to the inmate can start shrinking the second they walk out the gates. I was joined earlier by Alex Friedman, managing editor of Prison Legal News, and I asked him why prisons use these prepaid cards at all instead of just cutting a check. Well, they claim as a matter of convenience um, that they don't have to deal with the check writing, they don't have to provide them with cash upon their release, and by contracting with these companies, it doesn't cost the corrections agency anything because the, the private companies that typically provide these cards companies like JPay or New Me Financial or even a number of banks, uh, they make their money through the fees that are imposed on the end user, in this case to release prisoners. Now financial companies have argued they use the fees to pay for the cost of issuing and managing the cards and that on top of that they really don't make any kind of profit from it. If that's true and you're saying it's not, what would their incentive be? Well, we don't know if it's true because these are private companies and they're not opening their books for advocates such as us to take a look and see what their actual profit margins are. Private companies typically don't want to reveal their profit margins and typically don't. Um, in this case, the incentive is to provide prisoners with these cars with these um, consumer unfriendly fees in order to maximize their revenue. And, and the big issue here is that the prisoners have no choice. If people want to purchase debit cards and use debit cards, that's perfectly fine, as long as they have a choice and they can decide which card they want to use, typically the one with the lowest fees. Prisoners have no choice. They're foisted these cards upon them once they leave prison. And in order to access their own money, they have to pay fees. And in no other context that we can think of does that exist. Now, Alex, how do these predatory practices affect the inmates that are trying to reintegrate into society? Well, it certainly makes it more difficult if uh, that's all the money in the world you have is on a plastic card and the card has maintenance fees and it has monthly fees and it has transaction fees. And if you want to check the balance inquiry, there's a fee. And if you make a purchase, any purchase, there's a fee. And if you decide you want, you want to cancel the card and just get your money back, there's a fee for that too. So these are very exploitive instruments and it makes it uh, just more difficult for prisoners to reintegrate when they leave prison and all they have is a plastic card, which they may or may not be able to use at any particular you know, ATM. Um, if the balance on the card, for example, is under $20, most ATMs only give out $20 and above. So they may not be able to access all of their funds. So there's a number of problems with these cards. So why do you think it's been largely ignored by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? And, and do you think that this letter from these 18 senators will make any kind of difference? Well, the letter by the 18 senators was actually preceded by comments we submitted to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, along with 68 other uh, organizations that are concerned about these issues, and that was back in March. Um, so I don't think it's been a, a big issue with federal regulatory agencies just because of the scope of the issue. There's, there's lots of debit cards. Only a certain percentage of them are related to prisons and jails. Uh, but we have 2.2 million people locked up in the United States. Every single year, around 630,000 are released from prisons. Every single year, over 11 million people cycle through jails. So this is an enormous market and it does affect a large number of people. And in the past where the federal regulators have not looked at this issue, now we're hoping that they do. So you, have you ever heard a response from your request for uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or has anyone else up until these senators' requests? Mm. Well, right now the, uh, the CFPB is actually examining the issue. So we submitted formal comments uh, based upon a public comment period, as well as a number of other people. Um, but very few people are actually submitting comments and making uh, formal you know, written comments regarding this issue. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a new issue that's come out there, but it's new simply because uh, the market, the industry of providing debit release cards has increased in recent years. And a lot of the same companies that provide these cards also provide a number of other for-profit services in prisons and jails, like JPay, for example, provides a whole 
you know, a list of, of services to prisons and jails, all of them for profit, all of them with associated fees. Alex Friedman, managing editor of Prison Legal News. Nice to have you on. Thank you. Thank you.